Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna show you my new studio, the space, go over some of the products I bought. And yeah, let's just take a look at the studio slash productivity station. Firstly, with this space, what I wanted uh, was something very more minimalistic. I wanted the background to kind of disappear a little bit or to not be distracting. Previously, I think I had a, a pretty distracting setup and it was uh, honestly kind of, you know, just amateurish. I wanted something a little more professional looking, uh, which I feel I'm getting close to that. I'm not quite done. I'm going to get some down lighting on these shelves back here uh, to kind of highlight some things on there. And I want them to kind of uh, not be focal points, but to be some interesting things in the background. Uh, so that's coming still, I'm not done with that yet. So by no means is this done and like the perfect setup, but I am very happy with it so far. So then I wanted to redesign this area right here. Normally I stand, uh, which I kind of wanted to be more, I wanted to sit down at this table here to be able to do my product reviews, but also just give it more of a, a personable feel with you all, the audience, uh, kind of like we're just friends sitting at the table and chatting. I wanted it to kind of invite you in. So hopefully that's coming across. Uh, and something to consider if you're looking at doing a studio as well. I wanted a color for the background walls that was calming and uh, just, you know, dark because like I said, I wanted to kind of disappear and uh, contrast me and the lighting. For my main light here, I have my old uh, ESDDI uh, softbox lights. They're not dimmable, but I did actually purchase a softbox grid that goes over it. It's actually meant for like an aperture style light, but I was able to take off the softbox shell from the uh, previous light and then get this one to fit over it and work. It's not perfect, but it obviously gets it across pretty well. And then to my left, I've got another one of the ESDDI soft boxes, just shooting straight up at the ceiling, kind of giving a little bit of a overall light to the room, just because without it, it was a little bit darker. I haven't quite figured out the lighting setup yet. So it is still a work in progress, but I'm definitely uh, very happy with what I have so far. Okay, so now let's take a look at the productivity station. So let's, you know, where the magic happens as far as, you know, the editing for my videos, the, you know, my daily job, my profession. So I did purchase a new desk, uh, and this is uh, not really an L, but more of a, maybe a V-shaped desk, I don't know, because both of the sides are the same length. It allows me to fit plenty of monitors, computers on it, and I'm just really happy with the overall size and feel of it. So for my workstation, I have the uh, two monitors that, you know, obviously my company provided those, and then my Dell laptop and keyboard, uh, external mouse, all of that just for a little bit easier productivity, a little bit more efficient. Uh, and then, you know, to the left of it, I've got my docking station, which controls all of that. And then to the left of that, I have my uh, iPhone on a docking station where it can just sit on top of it and charge. Uh, you know, without having to connect any wires to it, which is just really nice. I like that a lot. And then moving over is my editing station. So I, I wanted a separate space to edit that I could uh, have more space. Previously, it was just really crammed. I had just the uh, MacBook in front of me and just that tiny 13.1 uh, inch or 14 inch screen, whatever it is, it was very small. So I did upgrade to where now I can actually close my, uh, my MacBook Pro and use an external monitor. For the monitor, I chose the Dell S2722QC. It is a 4K monitor. Uh, just had really good reviews and overall ratings from ratings.com as far as for the color gamut. It's the um, sRGB scale, and it's just uh, really good for editing videos on. Uh, you know, I was looking at the Asus ProArt as well, uh, but I decided to go with the Dell uh, here because uh, it was 4K and it was uh, USB-C uh, charging, so I can actually plug it into my MacBook Pro and it'll charge my MacBook Pro uh, at the same time while I'm using it as a display, which is awesome. And also has a couple of great ports on the back of it so I can plug in the headphones, I can plug in uh, my wireless mouse or, you know, through the USB mouse, uh, as well as external hard drives, things like that, or a docking station. So it's really uh, pretty nice. And so far, editing videos on it has been amazing. Just the colors are fantastic and it's a bigger screen for me to see DaVinci Resolve in. And I feel like it's really gonna increase my productivity and efficiency as far as editing goes. And with using an external monitor, I had the laptop closed. So obviously I needed a keyboard. So I went with the, uh, I guess it's called Macaulay. Uh, Macaulay, I'm not really sure how they pronounce it, but it's a Bluetooth wireless keyboard. Uh, you can charge it up. It'll last for like six-ish hours, give or take. Uh, and then, you know, you can plug it back in. So I've got the charging cables right there on the desktop where I can plug it in easily. Uh, and then it just connects Bluetooth. You can, connect, you can connect it to multiple devices like, you know, your iPhone, iPad as well, some smart TVs. So I've just got it paired with the MacBook Pro for my editing. And so far it's been awesome. I just turned the MacBook Pro on 
and then flip this keyboard on and it just connects almost instantly. Uh, it's fantastic and it works really well. By the way, I will have links in the description for these products. These are affiliate links. They do help support the channel, but they cost you nothing extra. I think this was like 60 bucks, you know, really not a bad price for a, for a, uh, a wireless Bluetooth keyboard. And with all of these electronic devices needing power, I wanted to protect them. So I wanted to get something that could keep them safe during, you know, a lightning storm, thunderstorm, power surge, whatever. So I got this off of Amazon. It's a Trond 4000 joule surge protector with USB ports as well. So I do have all of my devices plugged into this and this has enough joules to really protect all the devices, you know, no matter how many watts they're pulling. It's just a uh, pretty good and I like this one too because it is wall mountable. So I wanted to be able to keep this up high because you know I'm in the basement. Some of this office is below grade and uh, unfortunately uh, if it rains incredibly heavy for a long period of time, I do get a little bit of water that does seep through the foundation in that corner. It's something I've always dealt with, but I wanted the cables to be off the ground and I have to worry about that. So I mounted this to the wall, uh, tried to keep the cables as neat as I can. I'm still working on cable management just a little bit, but having it mounted, it's easy to access. I can see the, the lights on it to know whether it's protected right now, which it is. And it's just really good. It's, it's, uh, it's worked out well for me so far. Uh, take a look in the description for the link to go check out one of these. And then being a YouTuber, you know, I have a lot of electronics as well, a lot of cameras, uh, batteries, GoPro batteries, wireless mic batteries, headlamps as being a runner, a lot of things like that need charge. So I wanted to have a charging station. So over to my left here uh, is an old bookcase. It's nothing pretty, nothing fancy. It's just something I had left over and I actually turned it into a charging station. So I mounted a, just a small power strip on top of it. So now I can plug in the newer charger for my Sony camera batteries here. I've got the GoPro charger. I've got headlamp charger. I've got all other cables to plug in the watches that I do reviews on. All of that can be done right there. It's nice and organized and it's just really nice to have that because before I would have to kind of plug things all over the office and it just wasn't uh, it wasn't organized, now it is, and it makes me happy. With all of that gear, I needed storage for a lot of the components. So I have a closet space over here to my side, which is covered just with like a, you know, a shower curtain rod, and then I have some curtains covering it right now to keep it, you know, so it's not so unsightly. But I did do some organization there, nothing great, but just made it easy to see what's back there. You know, I've got my Skydio, my DJI gimbal, the Ronin uh, SC is back there as well the uh, GoPros, all of my bags for these lights, uh, all the other products that I use for the different, you know, product reviews or filming. It's all tucked away back there. Stuff for my office is back there as well, like printer paper, all sorts of things, my old computer. Just nice to have that a little more organized so I can see it and get to everything uh, pretty easily. And I like, you know, I have the light overhead so I can see pretty well what's in there. And it's just nice. If you have an office, if you have somewhere that you're turning into a studio, Think about some shelving that you can uh, put your devices on. Maybe get a label maker and label things. I haven't done that yet, but I'll probably do that pretty soon. And it just makes it easier to stay organized. And then lastly for the room, uh, I wanted to do something for the sound because this is a, you know, I've got a concrete floor that's been painted and then just drywall on the walls. So the sound does kind of echo a little bit. So I did get some sound panels again off of Amazon, got them mounted to the walls. Helps to absorb some of that a little bit, reduce some of the echo. Uh, and the rest I can just take out in post and try to clean it up a little bit. And, and, but I am probably also going to get a rug to put in here just to kind of, again, absorb a little bit more of the sound. I have those panels. I've got, I think, 12 of them all around the room. A couple actually directly above me here on the ceiling also. And I have definitely noticed an improvement just since having those. But those have been up for a while. Uh, so they've been they've been doing a good job for me for at least a year. So all in all, that's the office space, the studio space. Uh, you know, it's... The, the furniture and components are really not that expensive. I think that desk was maybe 140 bucks. Uh, again, link in the description. This table right here, this is a tall, uh, kind of like bar height table, was again, probably 120-ish, something like that. The monitor is by far the most expensive, uh, newer thing that I purchased. Uh, you know, these lights, again, are not the most expensive lights out there. They're pretty, you know, pretty cheap. The camera is obviously expensive, and uh, that's the Sony a6400. Uh, and then, you know, a Manfrotto tripod, but, uh, and obviously these microphones, these are the Ceramonic Blink 500s. But um, yeah, you know, you can really put together a pretty decent studio space for not a lot of money if you're creative, if you're okay doing the painting yourself. So yeah, be creative, look online, look in stores locally to you, see what you can find. You might be able to find some used lights, uh, some used products out there potentially to use in your studio space. So it's definitely possible to put something together that looks pretty good without spending a ton of money. Well, that's it. I hope that this uh, studio tour office space has maybe been helpful, giving you some ideas on things you can try to maybe help your space, increase your productivity maybe. 
If so, let me know below. I'd be curious to see what other things you do out there that maybe I could steal from you as well to kind of improve this space. Uh, but I hope you like the overall look. I'm very happy with it. I feel it's very calming. This color is also just very calming. Being down here all day working uh, is nice and I, I enjoy it. So anyway, thank you for watching. I do appreciate you all. Definitely give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. I would really appreciate that. Maybe if you're new, click subscribe. You'll see more content like this. I may put together a full review of that monitor after a little while, some more use with it because it is a, it's a nice monitor. Uh, but yeah, you also see lots of running content, shoe reviews, product reviews, uh, hydration vests, watches, all sorts of stuff. But thank you for watching. I do appreciate you all. If you want to take a look at what this space looked like before in depth, take a look at it on your screen here. You can see the old studio. And over on this side of the screen, I'll put a playlist of some race videos to check out, like the Beaverhead 100K, which I just did last month, and it was beautiful. So check that out too. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you all, and I will see you on the next one.